Well, President Obama says he wants to fight genocide in the Middle East by cracking down on, on company and companies and people that use technology that allow it to happen. He signed the executive order yesterday at the Holocaust Museum here in Washington, D.C. The order targets those that use communication technology to monitor or track people to assist the regimes commit human rights abuses. President Obama said, quote, these technologies should be in place to empower citizens, not repress them. But while the president condemns the monitoring of citizens abroad, Congress here in the U.S. is aiming to do just that. The controversial cybersecurity bill known as CISPA is up for a vote this week, and critics say it violates Internet freedoms by allowing companies to hand over private information to the government in the name of cybersecurity. So is this a case of do as I say, not as I do? Declan McCullough, correspondent for CNET News, is here to weigh in. Hi, Declan. Um, so first want to talk about the timing of this executive order. President Obama signs it just before Congress is up to vote on this bill, CISPA, this bill that would limit Internet freedoms and expand the ability of companies and the government to monitor Internet users. Could this be seen as hypocritical? Well, uh, there are a lot of different moving parts to any large government, uh, and the U.S. government is no exception. The timing of the House floor vote that's going to happen on Friday on the House cybersecurity bill is because it's some sort of national cybersecurity week. So that's, that explains the timing. I, I don't know if it's uh, hypocritical, but it is a bit jarring. I mean, if uh, you say uh, that uh, let's keep the Internet free overseas, it'd be nice to keep the Internet free here as well. I'm not saying the U.S. is the worst offender. Um, many other, maybe even most other governments are worse. Uh, but what the CISPA bill would do is it would let uh, U.S. Internet companies, telecommunications companies, open their networks to the National Security Agency, to the military, and trump every privacy law we have on the books in the process. And um, more on that controversial bill that is up for a, a vote this week. Ron Paul is one of the handful of lawmakers that is speaking out against it. Um, here is what he has he's said about this bill. Uh, encourages some of our most successful Internet companies to act as government spies, sowing distrust of social media and chilling communications in one segment of the world economy where Americans still lead. Proponents of CISPA may or may not be well-intentioned, but they unquestionably are leading us toward a national security state rather than a free constitutional republic. So, Declan, I want to get your reaction to that, equating this bill to allowing companies to act as government spies. Well, here's the way CISPA works. And uh, you can check out uh, the House Intelligence Committee's website for the reasons they want to do it this way. I'm not going to make that argument right now. We don't have time. But what it does is, is it says you have all these privacy laws in the books. Uh, you, AT&T, you, Verizon, you, Facebook, might have confidential or sensitive information about your users. Maybe it's email. Uh, maybe it's telephone, telephone or Internet communications. And in general, the, the cops can't access that. The, the FBI can't access those without a wiretap order or a court order or something similar. And so what CISPA does is it trumps that. It says uh, you, these Internet companies, can turn over this information to the feds uh, for um, because it might help in some cybersecurity purposes. Uh, and so it would, you could fix this law in a few ways or proposed law in a few ways. You could say, uh, well, we're going to... Be, um, to, to only allow this to be handed over to non-NSA agencies. We're only going to trump these specific privacy laws, but allow these other privacy laws to be in the books. But so far, the backers of the law think they have the votes. They have over 100 sponsors in the House. Only 18 Democrats signed a letter of opposition yesterday. Ron Paul was one of the few Republicans. I think they, they think that they can get it through the House floor in a vote on Friday. And so, well, there are some critics to this um, and what they say is that it is exactly what you just said right there that there is a lot of the language in this bill is very broad and the it would uh, expand powers to, to reach much farther than perhaps um, what is intended um, so what is what do you think the chance is that the bill is going to pass as is 
pretty good, actually. I, I think this is a case of the opposition happening probably a little too little too late. We didn't really see uh, uh, the petitions. It's now over 700,000 people uh, signed it. You didn't see these letters being circulated until late last week, early this week. And sometimes uh, there's momentum developing an opposition to CISPA, but you need more time. And I just don't think they have enough uh, time uh, to derail this in the House. On the other hand, uh, there's uh, the Senate uh, and there's it's hardly clear that it's going to get through the Senate this year, especially if it becomes seen as controversial. It's interesting that you say that this is going to pass um, because a lot of people compared this bill to PIPA, and we saw the outrage over that. We saw a lot of companies participating in this Internet blackout to put pressure on Congress to not pass these laws, and they ended up dropping it because of the public opposition. Why haven't we heard the same amount of outrage over, over this bill, CISPA, which many say um, is even worse than PIPA? Well, probably two reasons. The first is that the backers, um, the authors of this, the folks in the House Intelligence Committee, are a little smarter than maybe the backers of SOPA and Protect IP PIPA. Uh, they have made some modest changes uh, in, res in response to criticism. The word intellectual property was in there. Now it's not. There's still vague language that accomplishes the same thing. Uh, but uh, uh, that's one thing they did. The second is that what defeated uh, Protect IP and SOPA in January was uh, the, an alliance between uh, civil liberties groups, advocacy groups, libertarian conservative liberal groups, and Silicon Valley. It was the tech companies fighting Hollywood. Now you have a lot of the tech companies, most notably Facebook and pretty much every trade association on board saying, we like this bill. So uh, then if you're a member of Congress, you see um, all these technology groups on board and Facebook saying, we love it. What are you going to do? You might actually believe them. You might have signed on. Uh, so th that lack of an alliance is what is pushing this thing forward. And do you, do you think that there's anything that um, citizens can do, kind of a, a last-ditch effort to try to prevent this from passing? Because uh, so far, we haven't seen the same opposition. Yeah, the same kind of opposition just hasn't happened. Uh, 700,000 people signing a petition is not the same as over 10 million people who participated in the SOPA and Protect IP or PIPA protest in January. I mean, there's an order of magnitude difference here. Uh, what can you do um, if you don't like this bill? Um, uh, then uh, groups like the Electronic Frontier Foundation, EFF.org, uh, have petitions you can sign, uh, um, uh, ways to contact your members of Congress. I mean, if you, if you want to, if you like this bill, you hate this bill, uh, you want, want to weigh in, uh, you contact your member of Congress in, um, if, in the House of Representatives, and that's the, the way to actually make a difference. And also look up online to see if they're a, um, a co-sponsor of this bill by checking on thomas.llc.gov. All right, Declan, thank you very much for coming on the show. We will, of course, follow the developments uh, on this bill and how it um, plays out in Congress. That was Declan McCullough, correspondent for CNET News.